Hello students and welcome to the lesson on measuring angles. Now in your geometry class you certainly measured angles before and my guess is you've always used degrees. And so this lesson is about introducing new ways to measure angles and some of them have uh, clear advantages over the traditional degrees. And so the first um, method here is called degrees, minutes, and seconds. And this isn't really any different than degrees, it's just defining these new terms here. So um, basically what people found out over time is that when you're using a degree to measure angles, events, some angles are really small or you want to have a very uh, precise measurement and degrees by itself isn't enough. So they created these uh, other sort of subunits of degrees. And so we define one degree as having 60 minutes, one minute as having 60 seconds and what that means is that one degree is equal to uh, 60 minutes times 60 seconds or 300 or 3600 seconds so one degree is defined as having 60 minutes uh, one minute is defined as having 60 seconds, and then we can kind of connect the two ideas together that one degree has 3,600 seconds. And so from here, we can look at a couple of examples. Um, let's look at this first example here, which asks us to convert 42 degrees, 24 minutes, 36 seconds into degrees. So let me go back and explain the, the notation a little bit here. So the little uh, tick mark on the top here, I'll write it on the side, uh, 24 tick with a single tick really means uh, 24 minutes. And then the one with the double quote or the double tick mark, this really means 36 seconds. So, and now we can do our conversion. Um, so we, we already have degrees here, so we have 42 plus 24 minutes. But if you notice up here, a degree is 60 minutes from the top here. What that means is that one minute is 1 60th of a degree. So all we're really doing here is dividing both sides by 60. And one second is really one sixtieth of a minute and also uh, this conversion here between seconds and degree that really means that we have one second is really one three thousand six hundredth of a degree and so once we have all this in order, um, we can go back to our problem here and, and finish this out. So plus 24 minutes, but that's really 24 60th of a degree. Okay, so I have uh, 42 degrees, 24 60th of a degree, and then I have 36 seconds, but 36 seconds is really 36 over 36 hundredth of a degree. And um, if I add all of this up, uh, this should give me 42.41 degrees. And when we look at this example, it kind of gives us some of the motivation for why the DMS system was, it was created. It was basically that when you do these measurements, instead of saying 42.41 degrees, uh, it's, it's somewhat hard to measure that on a wheel. So how do I know that I've turned something 0.41? of a degree, but it's easier if we can divide the wheels into smaller parts and we can go, we'll go 42 uh, minutes, 42 degrees, 24 minutes, 36 seconds, kind of, of the way you look, you're looking at a clock. Instead of saying, you know, uh, two hours, 2.75 hours, we say two hours and 45 minutes. And so having these little nice integer numbers um, um, help people to, to do the measurements and also to, to communicate a little bit better. So we've done one example now. Let's do the other when we're converting from degrees to DMS. 
So we want to convert 37.425 degrees to DMS. And so the way to sort of approach this is, look, I already have 30 degrees. I'm 37 degrees, all set, okay? Now, all I need to do is deal with how many minutes and how many seconds is that? So how many minutes and how many seconds is in this part right here? And so to do that, we're gonna do our unit conversion. So I have 0 0.425 degrees times uh, one degree for every 60 minutes. And so this is unit analysis. We want to express this ratio. We can express it as degrees on the top or degrees on the bottom, but we want the units to cancel. And so now I have four or 0.425 degrees times 60 minutes per one degree and that is going to give me 25.5 minutes once you multiply that out. So now I can update my answer here and I can say, look, I have, uh, I have 37 degrees, 25 minutes, and then I got half a minute here. So I got 0.5 minutes here that I have to deal with. So I have 0 0.5 minutes that's still left over here, and I need to convert that into seconds. Well, we'll go back to our, our conversion factor, that one minute has 60 seconds in it, so our units will cancel, and this will give me 30 seconds. Or I'll write this using uh, the symbolism or the symbology that we're used to, 30 seconds. So my final answer is, 37 degrees, 25 minutes, 30 seconds. And so just to recap, I mean, this, I, this concept here of degrees, minutes, and seconds is just a, a way for us to somewhat communicate fractions of a degree using pure integers. Instead of saying 42.41 degrees, uh, it's is often more convenient to just say 42 degrees, 24 minutes, 36 seconds. Same thing here, instead of saying 37.425 degrees, we can just say 37, 25 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, and this is um, a common application in, um, in navigation problems. Okay. And so uh, I'm gonna erase this and we're gonna continue on to our next concept. So we know that there's one way for us to measure using degrees. We can measure it more finely using um, minutes and seconds. And this is probably the biggest concept in terms of measuring angles, and that's a radian. Okay, and also I'll give you the definition of a radian first, and it is the ratio between arc length and radius of a circle. The ratio between arc length and radius of a circle. And so let's look at a, a picture here because that, that's always helpful. So if I have a circle and I have some radius here, R, and I rotate this thing, I take this, I measure out some arc length here, whatever this length here, we'll call that S, and I'll extend the radius here. So this I'll use a different color here. So this is S right here. So a radian is a measure of the length of the arc to the length of the radius. So in this case, a radian is, you know, there are S over R radian. Now, if you notice here, we also have an angle that's, that's formed here. This angle in here, and I'll use this. And we're gonna use this symbol uh, theta a lot. This is a Greek symbol, I'll make a note here. 
This is a pronounced theta. And that's the measure of the angle that's formed when you build this arc right here. And we can certainly take out a protractor and measure this, but we can also, using our definition of radian, saying that the measure of angle theta is equal to S over R. So however long this arc is right here, divide that by the length of the radius, and that's, that's how big this angle is. And this is somewhat of a, you know, it may be kind of a weird concept to begin with, but this is actually a more reasonable way to measure angles than the way that we're used to doing it. Uh, if you remember from, you know, geometry, a circle has 360 degrees, but there's really no reason why it is. I think somebody in ancient Greek, you know, thought that it was close that the earth rotated around the sun in about 360 days, so they made a circle 360 degrees. But we know that's not accurate. But, but it's a system that we're kind of stuck with. Now, this is a more um, precise and a more physically reasonable way to measure an angle because it's based on the measurements of the circle itself. So it's, um, you have a radius that has a, that has a sure and definite measurement. You have an arc that has a, a measurement. And now you, have a, um, you can measure the angle by taking the ratio between the arc and the radius. So we can look at an example here. Here I have a, uh, a circle, okay. the radius of this is 15, and this purple arc here has a length currently of 24.04, .04. and you can see that as I move this radius around the circle, uh, the arc length changes, the radius stays the same, and we can, you can see here that, I'll show you with the calculator, 37, Point three five divided by 15 gives you 2.49 and so and I if I keep on going like this uh, GeoGebra here is going to calculate um, the measurements for me automatically and so this is a, a nice fact that uh, this is this the measure of this angle is connected to the measurement of the arc and the measurement of the radius and so that really is the, the big idea about um, a radian. Now, one of the things that, another thing that we can point out here is, if I rotate this arm here all the way down here to about half of the circle, uh, how big is this angle in radians? So if I take this circle here, I'll draw another circle, and this is radius r. Let's say I went, let me go back to my picture. There we go. If I have a circle here and this radius r, if I take if I take a arc length that goes all the way around the circle, all the way around the circle, what is that arc length? Well, in this case, arc length is really equal to the the uh, circumference of the circle. And <clears throat> which means that arc length, the definite, remember that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So the arc length here is 2 pi r. Okay. And theta, in this case, which is actually an angle that you know, rotates all the way around, theta, by definition, is s over r, which is 2 pi r. So that's what s is equal to over r. You can see the r's cancel, and that's 2 pi. So one of the things that we can say is that <clears throat> um, the angle measure for the entire circle here is 2 pi radian. It's two, this is, I wrote 2 pi here, but I, you know, but, but you really should really say that it's 2 pi radian. And so one of, one of the things that we're interested in now with this new system of measuring angles is how do we convert between this and the old system? So let's say if I had a question like, oh, um, you know, uh, 60 degrees is how many radians? Well, 
to answer that question, we have to look at the, the circle again. And if you notice, one full circle is 2 pi radian. So I'll write this here. One full circle is 2 pi radian. And one full circle, from what we know in geometry, is 360 degrees. And what that tells me is that 2 pi radian is equal to 360 degrees. So we can, um, we can also see that there's some common factors here. We can divide both by 2, and we can sort of conclude here that pi radian is equal to 180 degrees. And this is our uh, conversion factor. This is a conversion factor uh, for converting be between radian and degrees. Okay. So we'll look at this here. Um, you can see that once I go about ha halfway around the circle, or 180 degrees, uh, the measure of this angle in radian is approximately 3.14, which is pi. If I go all the way around, uh, it gets close to 6.28, which is approximately 2 pi. So a full circle is 2 pi radian. Half a circle is pi radian. And you can see, again, the, the, the usefulness of this is that the measurement of any angle is connected physically to the measurement of the arc and the radius of the, of the circle. Okay. So I'm going to end this video here, and uh, we're going to do some examples in the next video on how to convert back and forth between radian and degrees.